church. It's nice to see you here today. It's nice to go first morning. If you will, our first hymn of the day will be hymn number 426. Yeah. 
thank you, Lord, for the ones that have come. And we pray, Father, that you bless them for being in your house. I pray, Father, for the ones unable to be here this morning. I pray for those that are sick, those that are traveling. I pray, Father, that you watch over them and lift them up. I pray, Father, for the many that are suffering today from the storms across the nation, that you would uh, watch over them, Lord, and supply them and keep them safe. I pray, Father, for your mercy upon us, Lord, because we need it. We pray, Father, that you bless your church. Help us to be a light in the community. Help us to reach out and touch those that don't know you. I pray, Father, for your guidance through the service this morning that all we do by glorify the name of Jesus. Lift us up, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
this offering and this church and us to your services. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
chapter of Acts, verses 7 and 8. Eyes are 
order against the the country. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But he says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. I want us to look at that word there in that second verse that it says, but ye shall receive power. You see, we have no real power within ourselves. I can't accomplish much of anything on my own. But with Jesus, we can accomplish many things. We can do a lot of things. We can be successful. The thing that we need to realize is the power is not of us. The power is of God. We need to rely upon Him for the power to do the things that need to be done. Uh, Jesus was talking to His disciples here, uh, and He told them so that the, the, the you receive power. You see, his disciples didn't really have any power to start with. Oh, they could pray and they could walk with him. They could talk, communicate with God. But until Christ gave them the power to do anything, they couldn't. And if we look at the, over in the 10th chapter of Matthew, we see what kind of power he gave them. These were his disciples, of course, the original ones. And, uh, The 10th chapter of Matthew, the first verse says, it says that when he called them, and I went and called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He gave his disciples power. You and I can receive power from Christ. We can't do anything on our own. We need to rely upon Jesus for the power and the strength that we need to make it from day to day. And I like that song that says, a prayer without faith is like a ship without a sail. Uh, it says, have faith when you talk to the master. Uh, and so we need to remember that if we don't believe that God is able to about imbue us with power, we're not going to receive it. We have to expect God's power to work through us when we are striving to do God's will. I can't save anybody. All I can do is present the message to you of how you can be saved. The, the action is between you and Christ. It's not mine. It's just me to tell you that Jesus saves. Jesus will give you the power. Jesus will lift you up. Jesus will be there for you if you will trust in Him and believe that He is able. <coughs> God's Word says that, uh, or Jesus said, that if we have the faith, we can move mountains. Well, I've got lots of mountains in my life. I've had lots of mountains in my life. And God has moved them. There have been things that I saw, saw as insurmountable, things that I could not possibly defend with. And yet God has given me the power to overcome these mountains that were in my life. Now, we need to realize that we're not going to just move about with sitting out here. It's been to be ridiculous to do so. What he is referring to is the mountains that we have in our lives that seem like we cannot make it over the top. We can't handle them. Uh, I know you've all got a lot of swamps and a lot of uh, mountains in your life. Or have had if you don't have them now. Or you will have and you need the power of God through Christ 
to get you over the mountain, mm -hmm. to move that mountain out of the way, to destroy that mountain, level it down so you could go right on through. I've had mountains that, that are impossible, and then God has moved them. God is able to meet our needs, and we will trust in His power, not in our own. I can't do it on my own, but God did it for me. You can't do it on your own. God can do it for you. But you have to trust in Him and receive the power to overcome through Him. You have to trust in Him. You have to believe in Him. You have to understand that God is all power. There's nothing impossible with God. He is able to lift up the sick, to heal, to save, to give life to the dead. He's able to do all things. <coughs> if we have the faith to trust Him. This is where it comes down to. You want power? We say that uh, the power, power, power of the blood. Well, there is. There's power that we can have to overcome the trials that we face day to day. Uh, even this allergies, colds, miserable, whatever. But we can overcome them. Uh, in Second Corinthians, by Second Corinthians. Here. About the, uh, uh, let's see, Second Corinthians, fourth chapter. And we're looking about the six or seven verses. Where he says to us, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, God has shined in us. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. I keep thinking about how much I can do on my own and then I realize that I fall flat on my face because I can't do it, but God can. God can give me the power to get up in the morning and to smile and be happy in spite of the trials and tribulations that we face in the world. God can give you that power if you will trust Him and ask Him for it. <coughs> God doesn't give us anything without me asking for it. He, well, He does supply us a lot of stuff uh, that we don't really ask for, many things that we don't ask for, but if you really want something from God, you have to ask Him. You need to ask Him, and you need to believe that He is able to supply. And God says He loves us. He wants us to have good things. He wants us to have uh, 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 a full life, a uh, uh, happy life. He wants us to be joyful. He doesn't want us to be sad. He doesn't want us to be filled with sorrow, with grief, pain, agony. He wants us to be happy. And we have to ask Him to give us that peace and that contentment and that joy within our hearts. Give us the power to overcome darkness that surrounds us. There's so much of it. We look at the world and it's in a horrible shape. Things are terrible out there. Everywhere you look, there's violence, crime, and disillusionment, and all kinds of stuff on every hand. But God is still able to overcome. He's still in control. He's still God. He hasn't given up. He's still there. He still knows what's going on, and he is still able to give us the power to overcome the trials that we face in our lives. He's able to do that. Uh, over in Ephesians, uh, uh, fourth word, chapter. <coughs> Uh, 
working through Christ to give me eternal life. And I believe that God who raised Christ from the dead is able to raise me from the dead also and give me eternal life. I believe I have that power through faith in Christ to have a hope eternal in the heavens. Do you have that same faith? Do you have that same assurance? Do you know that you're on your way to heaven? Do you know that you have a hope eternal in the heaven? It says, as many as have believed, he gave power to become the sons of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross for your sins? Have you received him into your heart, into your life as your personal Savior? I don't know what you've done with him, but I know that Christ can and will give you the power to become the children of God and to do all things that are necessary through him. We do a lot of things that uh, we have a lot of trials in our life. We have a lot of problems. He never promised us that we'd have an easy, smooth road all the way to heaven. In fact, he said that it's going to, we're going to have trials. We're going to have problems. We're going to have troubles. But he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'll be with you always. He'll give us the power to overcome whatever trial we face. How many mountains have you got in your life right now? Are you looking at a mountain? Give it to Jesus. Ask Him to move that mountain. And believe that He will. Trust Him. Jesus is faithful. What He has promised, He will do. What He has promised, He is able to do. What He has promised, He wants to do. But He wants us to ask Him. He wants us to believe that he can do it. He wants us to receive the power. He wants us to quit depending on us and start depending on him. I'm depending on Jesus today for everything. For all the guidance, everything I've got, I'm dependent upon him to supply. Who are you depending upon? The government? The government's failed. The government's going to pay well. Kingdom's perish. But God is eternal. Jesus' promises are forever. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's not going to change. He's not going to desert you. He's going to be there. Use the power of God in your life. Quit depending on yours. And you'll be a lot happier. Oh yeah, you'll have trials. You'll have problems. You'll have disappointments, but God is faithful to see you through all of them. He'll watch over you. He'll care for you. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? If you don't, well, you don't have the power. But you can have the power because He says if you believe, He'll give you the power to become the sons of God. If you believe. That power is available to you right now, free. All you have to do is ask for it. All you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Savior, that He's the Son of God, that He is able to supply your needs. Do you believe that? Have you done that? Have you accepted it? Has you acknowledged that you need help? Jesus wants to help you. He wants to give you the power to live a successful life, happy life. You can't have it otherwise. You're going to have problems. You're going to search for peace and contentment and happiness. And it's not there. Only in Jesus and through his power can you have peace within your life. Will you receive Jesus this morning as you say? Will you let him fill you with his power? Will you give your life to him and let him use you? Let him lead you. Let him take care of you. He wants to. He promised that he would. And all you have to do is humble yourself in the mighty hand of God and allow him to lift you up. Pride goes before a fall. Oh, I'm so proud of what I've done. No, I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm proud of what Christ has done. How about you? Give him the glory.
acknowledge that everything you have is because of Christ. That if you haven't received him as your Savior, invite him into your heart as Lord and Pastor. He will give you the power to become a child of God and a joint heir with Christ in the kingdom. Isn't that wonderful? I'm a child of the king. I pray that you use a short message for your honor, Lord. I pray for this one here that's walking apart from you, that, that are trying to do it on, on their own, that they would realize that in ourselves we don't have the strength to make it. We need help. And that Jesus will give us the power to make it through if we'll just let it. That will be done in this invitation. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand together as we sing. Please turn to hymn number 295. 295. Near to the heart of God. <laughs>